This program aims to find solutions to your medical queries. It seeks answers to common health problems that have been hounding you. We will help you out in finding answers to your medical concerns. I'm Angel Jacob and this is MedTalk, your weekly on-air health consultation here on the Solar News Channel. Its cure is unknown and its cause equally puzzling. Psoriasis is the end product of too much skin cell development. This leads to skin cells piling up on one another. Psoriasis uh, is actually a chronic, meaning matagala, no? skin condition. It's inflammatory, that's why there's redness. Once you're diagnosed with that, so you have to be paid, um, seek consult proper care, dermatologic care, and sometimes you can get arthritis, so you have also to have on board a rheumatologist to take care of you. It is a, unfortunately, has no permanent cure. For Edric John Salvanilia, a 28-year-old freelance sketch artist, psoriasis first reared its ugly head when he was 13 years old. At first, it was my brother who saw it, told my mom. Um, they thought it was just dandruff. Medyo inquisitive ako, so I kept asking the doctor nung nandun kami sa doctor kung ano yung sakit, ano yung pagdadaanan ko. His mobility has now become limited, forcing him to quit school and use a cane just to be able to walk. According to Psoriasis Philippines, Roughly 125 million people are believed to be suffering from this bothersome illness worldwide, with 1 to 2 million coming from the Philippines. The condition that it is not contagious, um, that it is safe to be with other people. Kasi may mga tao na may psoriasis, they spend all their time at home na. Halos din na sila lumalabas. And then there was a certain percentage na suicidal because of the condition. It's nice to have a support group because when people, when patients learn about, you know, the situation of their co psoriasis sufferers, things become a little uh, easier for them. How can you identify and control the triggers that cause psoriasis to act up? What treatment options are available? Find out the answers tonight on MedTalk. And joining us tonight is Dr. Maria Teresita Gabriel, Department Head of Dermatology at the Research Institute for Tropical Medicine and advisor of the Psoriasis Philippines Foundation. Also with us is Dr. Vermen Veraglio Ruel, Chairman of the Skin Cancer Foundation of the Dermatology Residency Program and Program Director of VMV Skin Research Center and Clinics. You may join the discussion by calling our hotline at 548-4678. Good evening, doctors. Welcome to the show. Good, Good evening. evening. Psoriasis. We're talking about that tonight. So, how common is it, Dr. Arwell? Pretty common, um, to, particularly if you have psoriasis. Of course, but uh, in the Philippines, as you heard, it's only about 2 million, and we are, what, 93 million people? So it's not that many, but for those who have the psoriasis, it can be really very, very terrible. Mm -hmm. um, the important thing, however, about psoriasis is that we must be sure it is psoriasis, you know? Uh, many times I've seen patients who come to the clinic and they have been diagnosed to, be, to have psoriasis and then I take a look at their skin lesions and it turns out they have anything from atopic dermatitis to nomular eczema to other eczematous diseases or even a condition we call contact dermatitis which is an allergy to something external and so therefore it's so treatable, you know, it can go away. So first impo most important thing make the correct diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Why is it easily misdiagnosed, Dr. Gabriel? 
Uh, How is this because so some would believe that because of the site of predilection, it's on the scalp, on the elbows, on the knees. When there are lesions on the scalp, they tend to overdiagnose psoriasis. Maybe it's a simple case of seborrheic dermatitis. Clinically, it's supposed to be red, elevated with these whitish thick scales. However, when the patient has already self-medicated, it appears differently. So sometimes you don't diagnose it properly. On the other end, some would misdiagnose it because they would see lesions on the areas where you should have psoriasis, like what Dr. Averalio has said. Uh, we had this uh, friend who has these lesions on the elbows, but it was contact dermatitis rather than psoriasis. So if in doubt, there are always good dermatopathologists like Dr. Averalio who can do a skin biopsy to confirm the diagnosis. But clinically, you can make a diagnosis of psoriasis. So the, that contact dermatitis, uh, it may be similar yes. to the uh, physical manifestations of psoriasis, yes. but it's still not the uh, skin the same. condition. Right. So this is the reason why we always say, go to a doctor who's really trained in dermatology and in the Philippines, it's somebody who is trained in the 11 institutions of residency training of the Philippine Dermatological Society. Mm -hmm. They, at least you know when you can go, the, when you go to a doctor like that, they know really that, uh, how to make a diagnosis of psoriasis. Mm -hmm. So a skin allergy or a rash uh, or a skin patch yes. can be uh, misdiagnosed as, as yes. psoriasis. Yes. Just here tonight, yeah. we, we, we found somebody who was diagnosed and who had been treated for psoriasis for a while mm -hmm. and took one look at it and said, oh, this is not psoriasis, mm -hmm. this is contact dermatitis. Well, at least now um, she, she already knows how to treat it yes. Yes. because it, it's not psoriasis just as uh, suspected right. or diagnosed. Yes, and it can go away permanently. Yeah. For contact dermatitis. Yes. How yes. about for psoriasis? Now, psoriasis is chronic it's relapsing and it's recurrent. So you have to be treated properly, but the treatment is individualized. You have to go to a PDS accredited dermatologist so that you get to see the different methods of treatment. It's not just topical, it's uh, phototherapy, the new thing is biologicals, it's injectable, and there's systemic therapy. There's a lot of treatment that can clear your psoriasis. Uh, we mentioned individualized. Let's mm -hmm. go back to our case study, EJ. Yes. Uh, he, yeah. um, the manifestations of his psoriasis came out when he was just a teenager yes. and, and it has crippled him in a way. Yes. What type of psoriasis is this? He probably has, from looking at him, mm -mm. at him from a distance, he looks like he has generalized black psoriasis yes. over the years with crippling psoriatic okay. arthritis. And this is where it is very, very important to make a diagnosis at the very beginning, mm -hmm. yes. to recognize when arthritis is present, because one doesn't have to look like that. Yes. When it's diagnosed early, you know, the treatments can be given early enough so that the crippling psoriasis doesn't have to set in. Yes. What's unhappy about this situation is that it was probably, uh, you know, not picked up early on and the treatments that are aggressive given immediately if it went during the severe phases so that it could calm it down, calm down the inflammation and therefore make the psoriasis of the skin minimal to clear or at least kept at a very low uh, level so that that you kind of thing doesn't happen. Deformities. Oh. Yeah. So psoriasis also does affect the joints? Yes. Not just, uh, Not just uh, the joints. Psoriasis is associated with comorbidities. It's not simply the skin. Mm -hmm. That is why if you have patients with psoriasis, you have to look at the blood sugar, you have to look at hypertension, you have to look at obesity, the triglycerides, and address all those conditions as well so that your psoriasis would not be that severe. Okay. Doctors, we have a caller on the line. Uh, hi, Ivy. Good evening. Hi. 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 Please go ahead with your question for our doctors. Yes, uh, I have itchy bumps on both of my elbows. They appeared on both left and right elbows at the same time last week. Is this psoriasis or eczema? <laughs> Thank you, Ivy. <laughs> Doctors? Uh, may I, may I, uh, yeah, if they just appeared last week 
and they're both elbows, my thing would be probably it is not psoriasis and yes. probably just contact dermatitis or a bite that got wider or whatever. But psoriasis tends to be almost chronic from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, so a one week diagnosis doesn't make psoriasis. Okay. Relax, I think you have something else. So it's if it's very acute. Contact dermatitis, uh, what could she do? Probably. Unless it's better if we see the patient personally. Okay. Because there's both the, elbows. Yeah. Probably contact. you put you plant your elbows when you're doing your computer <laughs> work or when, when you're watching television, you're sitting on an armchair with you know, putting your arms there. Mm -hmm. That's a possibility. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So no no uh, need to be alarmed about that. It's no. not chronic. Okay. <laughs> that right now. <laughs> All right. Now let's talk about common triggers. What could trigger a flare up? Doctor Gabriel. Uh, they say stress, but stress is wide, is broad. It could encompass emotional, physical, and psychological stress. Mm -hmm. So when you have infections, it triggers. When you dr take in drugs, it can be a trigger. Then, as Dr. Press always mentioned, you get a breakup with your boyfriend, you get a trigger. <laughs> Doctor? The other kinds of, yes, uh, there are lots of possible triggers. You're working in a call center at night and uh, it's very cold. You know, that cold atmosphere can be a trigger. I have lots oh. of psoriasis, so patients who work for call centers will really flare up. Um, you, you're, you're working at uh, long hours and not being able to sleep the, re the re requisite six to eight hours. Lack of sleep is a trigger. Smoking is a trigger. Uh, drinking too much alcohol, alcohol is another trigger, you know, so, um, or sc scratching itself is a trigger. It can trigger the your psoriasis clothing. to flare up. Clothing can yes, be a trigger. Be How a about trigger. diet and, and ah. uh, one's lifestyle, I mean like an exercise yes. or exposure? Over anything that's uh, beyond the normal would be a trigger. If you diet so much, that's a trigger. Right. If you exercise so much, that's a trigger. So anything in Things excess. Things should be done in moderation. moderation. Okay. Like for instance, I've had a number of patients who try to lose weight so much, and then they, they go on to the other side, so then they actually become immunosuppressed yeah. because of the too much loss of weight too rapidly. And so, yes, uh, and then with food, by the way, Trans that's an important fat. topic that I like to talk about. Mm. The, I like to call, call the, the diet I give to the patients with psoriasis anti-inflammatory, mm -hmm. which is no processed foods, unfortunately, mm -hmm. but just lots of healthy, good Filipino cooking. Okay. Yes. Ma lutong bahay, so lutong to speak. Bahay. Yes. But doctor, we'll go. We've talked about the triggers. Now we'll talk about how to manage them, how to control them. Mm -hmm. When Med Talk returns. <laughs> Did you know that the New England Journal of Medicine published a report about a man who burst into flames while undergoing psoriasis treatment at a local hospital? The man allegedly went outside to light a cigarette and appeared to have spontaneous combustion. But the disease itself did not cause the patient to flare up. The doctors discovered that the man recently had a tar treatment for his skin condition. Luckily though, he suffered no serious injuries. We're back here on Med Talk, still talking about psoriasis. Doctors, before the break, we were talking about um, the no-nos, so to speak, so that there won't be a flare-up mm -hmm. and the triggers that could cause one to itch right. and for uh, the, the skin uh, rashes to, to be more obvious, so to mm -hmm. speak. How about the treatments? Uh, what could be done? What could be given? What could be taken in or applied to the skin when one has psoriasis? Mm -hmm. 
There are various kinds of treatments, so ranging from the tars, which we really hardly ever use yes, nowadays because, because they stink, they smell, and they oh. mark you as being deadly bad. You know, okay. so we don't bother we don't with the tars that. anymore. <laughs> right? It's bad enough having psoriasis. So it goes from topicals lotions and creams that grease you up well. My favorite, all-time favorite is, of course, virgin coconut oil, because the nice thing about it is that in studies that we've done extensively, personally, as well as in the Philippine Dermatological Society, we've shown it to be not only a good moisturizer, but it also kills bacteria and fungus. And so therefore, on contact, as you continually apply it on the cracked, broken skin of psoriatics, the bacteria and fungus colonization is, is taken away. Mm -hmm. You were talking about the itching in psoriasis, and one of the causes for itching is not necessarily just the dry skin, but the secondary bacterial colonization of the skin. So you get rid of that, and skin isn't as itchy anymore. Okay. okay so topicals, and then from there you go to phototherapy that Tess mentioned, yes. which is the exposure to ultraviolet light in a graduated ma manner, really studied properly so that the skin, within two weeks, clears up wow. in, by about 50 to 70%. Another two weeks, you can actually have 100% clearance. Mm -hmm. So there are many things that can be done. And of course, like Tess says, the biologicals Systemic. are the miracle of the century as far as psoriatics. You can have 100% psoriasis today, and within two to four weeks, it can be 100% clear. Okay. So yes, we would like not to see any more terribly dis disfigured and arthritic patients in the future. Mm -hmm. There is great hope for them. Oh, thank you for that, doctors. Now we have another caller on the line. Hi, Celestine. Good evening. Um, hi, good evening. Hi, your question, please, for our doctors. Uh, yes, I've had psoriasis since I was young, and I noticed that my condition worsens. So my question is, during the cold season, uh, especially this Christmas, what can I do to prevent it? Thank you, Celestine. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Uh, if the cold season, the dryness causes the itchiness, then she should apply. As Dr. S said, she can try VCO, she can try other moisturizers. It will work well, it will remove the itchiness. But she can also use, if there's really severe itching, antihistamine or anti itch, but it should be non steroidal. You should not take oral steroids if you have psoriasis. So that's a no no. Mm -hmm. It will aggravate your psoriasis. So if it's for the itch, it should be plain anti itch, no steroid. Mm -hmm. So weather is a trigger as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, cold weather, warm weather, uh, th does Both. it also? If you perspire a lot. Mm -hmm. The change, I think, in uh, the weather, it was, seems to be the trigger. Yes. The change from a nice humidity mm -mm. to lowered humidity, for instance, or is, is what tr triggers it because the skin becomes, tends to become more dry. Okay. And then once it's really cold, the cold mm -hmm. weather with all that low humidity, and that's why one of the reasons why you get to see so many more psoriasis cases in the northern hemispheres, America, uh, Scandinavian Europe. countries, Europe. You know, they have much more psoriasis. Because of their weather. Yes. Okay. Doctors, a Twitter question now. Can you control psoriasis with one's diet? We were talking about this earlier. Yes. Control in what sense? If you say clear, it will not be cleared, but it will improve. Mm -hmm. Maybe manage. It managed. will include diet in the management. Mm -hmm. So no processed food, no trans fat. That will improve your psoriasis on top of the other medications. Okay. Now we have another caller on the line, doctors. We have Luz. Hi, Luz. Good evening. Hello. Good evening, doctor. Your question, please. Uh, hello. Good evening, doctor. Uh, I would like to refer the case of my. Uh, I would like to refer the case of my 98-year-old father, who for the past few years has been suffering from this uh, reddish, dry skin on both legs. Uh, initial treatment simply included cream, for the, but, it did not, but these medicines did not help. Uh, he says he suffers from a pain occasionally. We, we thought that it was a case of psoriasis, but the initial laboratory exam said it is a case of mucinosis. So I, I don't know if you are familiar with, with that this skin disease. Uh, 
So I, we would like, I would like to get your advice, doctor. Thank you, Luz. Yeah. Doctors. Um, mucinosis basically means the collection or accumulation of a um, material in the skin called mucin. It's like a sticky material there. Once you make the diagnosis, though, you have to find out what the cause is. Because I mean, mucinosis can be due to a thyroid condition. It can be due to some other conditions in the body that deposits mucin there. Mm -hmm. uh, there are diabetes, diabetics, for instance, who have a condition of the skin where mucin is also present. So a diagnosis of mucinosis means you have to look for the lesions cost. that look like mucinosis in the other parts of the body because it's very unlikely for mucinosis to, to appear just on the legs, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, there is necrobiosis lipoidica, for instance, that is a diabetic thing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but that, you know, like I said, we have to make the proper diagnosis. And then uh, once that is done, then the treatment can follow. You look for the primary cause and then the treatment follows very well. Mm -hmm. I think that she was saying about some laboratory, I think there was a biopsy with mm -hmm. special stain yeah. to confirm the diagnosis. Okay. Then it doesn't stop there. Yes. As Dr. Rai said, you have to follow through because if you don't know the primary cause, then you cannot cure the secondary cause, which is the secondary lesion, which is the mucinosis. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, from the diagnosis to the treatment, yes. how does one continue? How does one um, manage the, uh, the skin condition, psoriasis? Dr. Aguirre. Trigger. To me, the most important thing in management is know yourself. And this is why I spend so much time with patients when they come back. I talk with them and I come from many directions. Like, where were you last Sunday? Mm -hmm. You know, and what were you doing? Mm -hmm. And what did they say? And what, you know, it's almost like a friendly relationship I really get with my patients to find out what is the trigger that brings it on. If I clear them 100% today, for instance, and they come back and call and say, you know what, I have a little itching. I think I have a rash that's appearing on the, I said, where is it coming out first? You know, because even from the very first lesions that appear, you can have an understanding about, oh, maybe this is due to the dye coming down, and maybe the dye, was it after you had a hair dye? You know, questions like that. Both the patient and the doctor have to ask each other to try to find out what the trigger is. Because once you know the triggers, it's much easier to begin to control it so that there's clearance or at least less than 10% of the body being involved. Mm -hmm. it, it would also be helpful to write everything down. Yeah, exactly. That's I have a little make notebook. Sure that your patient's really taking in the medications or applying the medication. Right. There should be a way of monitoring mm -hmm. that they're really sticking to the medications. So and I think you should also involve the family and friends. Yes. And that's the importance of the support clubs. Mm -hmm. in, you mentioned family and friends and support clubs. Yes. Other people think that psoriasis is contagious. Oh. No, it's not. It's definitely but, not contagious. Yeah. I'm so glad you brought that up. Yes. You know, because it's the thing that Tess and I yes. are always uh, having to tell the world, it mm -hmm. seems. Psoriasis is an allergic disease. It's an immunologic disease of the skin. It involves the cells that produce Im uh, immune, immunological conditions. It is not at all infectious. Yes. As red, as dry, as scaly, as perhaps you would like to use the word ugly as it may look, totally non-contagious. You contagious. can have and embrace a psoriatic and nothing will happen to you. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's correct. Not contagious. T helper cells, hyperactive, that's a problem. Immune system going berserk, hyperactive. Mm -hmm. That's why you see all these thick lesions. So you just have to address that. Mm -hmm. If it's well explained to everyone, if you have a good information campaign, which is basically what we're doing now, informing the public, I think they will not be afraid of patients with psoriasis. You mentioned information campaign on a yes. final note, there's Psoriasis Philippines. Yes. And, and please tell us what this organization uh, does, how does it help those with psoriasis and the family and friends of, of these um, patients with this skin condition? Psoriasis Philippines has been here for more, I think, ab about 10 years. And it is an advocacy to inform the public of what psoriasis really is. Basically, what's most important is not contagious, then you should not be afraid of patients with psoriasis, and you should support patients with psoriasis. Actually, we will have a World Psoriasis Fund Day 
on October 27, that's on Sunday. That's along Rojas Boulevard. There's going to be a free clinic. And this is uh, by Philippine Dermatological Society. So this is a partnership between Psoriasis Philippines and Philippine Dermatological Society. Okay. Please Thank call you us 811-2449 because I think it's not going to be in Rojas this time. I thought it was going to be Jack, do you know? The uh, Psoriasis, the psoriasis fun Philippine. Run. Ah, what sports complex? Yeah, sports complex, right? In Pas... Uh, San, Andres. San Andres Sports Complex. Right. Okay, so that's on October 27 at the yes. San Andres Sports. That's sports. as early as 6 a.m. Okay, thank you, Dr. Gabriel. Final word, final note, Dr. Gabriel. If you have psoriasis, if you know anybody with psoriasis, hug them, care for them, support them, love them. You know, and then bring them to the right doctor. Yes. And be sure that they are treated as early as possible so that they, don't, they, they will spend their life thanking you and becoming very responsible and good citizens of the country. And we thank you, Dr. Veraglio and Dr. Gabriel, for enlightening us tonight on psoriasis. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. That was lovely. See you again next Tuesday on MedDoc, 10 p.m. on your scheduled on-air consultation on the Solar News Channel. This is Angel Hakob. Good night.